What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Non-Applicable Podcast, uh, Sports Talk Edition. Oh, that's right. My name is Chubbs. My name is Juan Tizzi. Uh We'll get right into it today. Um, All up in it. World Baseball Classic a couple days ago. It was a classic. Uh, United States winning over Puerto Rico. Yay! First time ever in the 11-year existence of the WBC. Yeah, they haven't fared too well. No. Well, it's most of the... Most of the players that are in Major League Baseball are from the Dominican Republic. Yeah, or, yeah, we don't, we don't. Yeah, Japan. We don't have we a go. wide variety of. Well, we kind of do now, but um, like a bunch of them didn't want to play because they wanted to be committed to their professional clubs, like Bryce Harper and right Kershaw. Is that is that really their choice, or is that their the club's choice? Uh, I think s- some of it's more the club because I, if I remember correctly, a lot of the clubs have it in their in their contracts when it comes to the world baseball classic that they can be more like nah it's it's too much for not for our team and we're paying you right i mean because if they get injured yeah uh it's no good for them or the team right so i completely understand it oh that makes sense uh so and that's the time they could be resting and, and working on their their you know game personally opposed to working on a team which gives you experience but it can right. wear you out at the end of the season Right. It's kind of funny. There's, I feel like there was more drama after the WBC ended than there was throughout the tournament. Uh, Adam Jones from the Baltimore, Baltimore. Orioles, playing for the United States, uh, after they won, said something along the lines of, uh, in an interview, that he had heard that Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rican team, had already set up their victory party. Having yeah, not even like they were going to win, they knew it. Right, they had championship T-shirts. They set up a parade. That's probably why they got their heinies handed to them because that's yeah. That's, so I'm not a karma, karma guy, but right. if I was, that's that's it. Yeah. So Adam said, Adam Jones said that you know they they were playing for a little bit, you know, a little bit something extra. They were a little bit more motivated. Chip on their shoulder. Having heard that, maybe a Dorito. <laughs> cool Ranch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Molina, Yadier, catcher of the Cardinals, uh, for the Cardinals. He doesn't just run out and catch birds. <laughs> you don't know. Uh, also on Team Puerto Rico is mad at Adam Jones and wants him to apologize for those remarks. Which it must it must have all happened afterwards because I don't know if you watched the game, but after the game, almost all the Puerto Rican players stayed out and like watched them celebrate and looked like genuinely happy. Like they weren't just like oh we lost they were just they were joking around they having were a good time vicariously through the yeah the team US well and since they've done it before um, but yeah and uh, he he wants him to apologize because uh, he, he said something on the line does of, he want a participation trophy too <laughs> he said Adam Jones uh, like wasn't taking it seriously and doesn't know what it means to the people of Puerto Rico uh, and. Adam should look at himself, who's now at spring training, working his tail off. Which he usually does anyways. Uh, and Yadier's at home with his family celebrating second place. <laughs> that mean, doesn't make any sense. How, how can anybody say a s- certain person doesn't know what it means to another person? How do you know that it doesn't mean more to Adam Jones or it doesn't mean more to certain players on the U.S. team or the U.S. team? A, it's the first time in 11 years they've won it. Who's Yadier to say that somebody else doesn't know what it takes or how it what it means to a, a certain region? Right, and I mean everybody handles both victory and defeat a little different. I, just, I get I get so mad when other people say you don't you don't know. How do you know that I don't know? Yeah, I mean I'm sure Adam Jones is ecstatic that they won, but yeah. he has a job to do that he gets paid for handsomely, and. You know he's he's going right back to work. I'm sure he's going to celebrate in his own his own. That's way. why Adam Jones gets paid handsomely, and Yadier's ugly. <laughs> well, I mean, with the the bleached hair. Oh my god! All of them had it, which is cool team camaraderie. But some of them look doom. Do a hockey does grow a beard? Can't. Not everyone can. Well, I mean, I Chubs. Barely, I barely can. So. Okay, okay. I mean, we're not like B. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, but anyway, so that's for WBC. Congrats to Team USA on their first championship there. America! Uh, yeah! Moving on, we have NHL, I'm sorry, NFL free agency. I was going to say, say, what? Yeah, NHL is still in the midst of the season. Uh, huge signing. Huge signing that we got to talk about. <laughs> Chicago Bears have signed 
Butt fumble Mark Sanchez. Dirty Sanchez. Oh, wait. To be their backup quarterback behind... Their third, fourth backup? Mike Glennon. Oh, that's right. Uh, of NC State. Shout out to NC State. All right. <laughs> I, I don't know... I don't know what Chicago's hoping to accomplish. They go, oh, we're, we're really bad with Jay Cutler. We should get some worse quarterbacks. <laughs> we should get ones that haven't proven anything ever. We're, we're going to lose as our a pro. number one receiver in Alshon Jeffrey to Philly. God. And then we're going to bring in worse quarterbacks. Poor Seth Rollins. He's not going to like that one bit. <laughs> um, He's a Bears fan for anyone that cares. Reference wise. Also, we have uh, Jason Pierre Paul. It's kind of old news, but yeah, he uh, inked a four-year deal with the Giants. Didn't they originally say they were gonna get franchise tag him, and then they agreed to a contract? Is that what I'm remembering? Probably right? correctly. As a Cowboys fan, I don't really pay too much attention to the Giants. I do because we compete against them, so I kind of want to know what they're doing. But I don't religiously like other people that hate our team. That are all up in our business. Right. I mean, there's no more... There's no... The most informed Cowboys person, I guess. Fan-wise? Well, I mean, a Cowboys hater knows more about the Cowboys... The Cowboys. ...than Cowboys fans uh, do. It's ridiculous. Don't get it. So you might as well just... I know a couple out there. ...become a fan. They're not listening, I don't think, though. Well, they're lost. Um, speaking of the Giants... Yes, it's good that they signed Jason Pierre-Paul. Uh, For, yeah, on one end of the ball. But then they decided to sign Geno Smith. Dude, so, interceptions are coming. I mean, they're already there. And if it was winter, too? <laughs> I, I don't care who the receivers are. Nothing nothing is going to help Eli Manning not throw interceptions. That's what, I don't even want to talk about him, so I'm not going to. That's fair enough, because that's, that's a heated conversation for us. I'm just sick of the, the people that will defend him because he has Super Bowls. Like, he was the, the reason. Like, their defense saved them. And then he had one pass that was a good pass in the spot that it needed to be. Yeah. But I don't understand the thought process of making allowances for before their Super Bowl rings and after. Like, they're null and void because he won it championships right it's like oh even though i'm getting older and better technically and no more in my career i'm still progressively throwing more interceptions but nobody cares because super bowls nulls right. and void me sucking i do find it hilarious that that one year he went on record saying that he is an elite level quarterback he threw a career high in interceptions he's in the 20s uh, I think it was it wasn't? 20, 23 uh, i thought it was even i thought he was in the 30s I don't think it was that high. I thought it was ridiculously. I'm probably I get I get my sports numbers confused in my head, so I, I think wish you're probably he right. Thirty this year. <laughs> He's I got Brandon he Marshall now to throw to, and still Odell Beckham. If he could throw thirty interceptions, that'd be great. <laughs> um, Manti Teo, he's been out of the news since he got into the NFL. And yeah, after the invisible his girlfriend, fake girlfriend disappeared. Nobody's talked about him. I guess she's really not going to see him anymore. That's how great of a pro he is. Uh, signed with the Saints. I don't. I don't know if this helps them or not. It's... I haven't paid enough attention to him. Like I've heard that he's been, you know, solid, but I don't. I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're in the right places when you're supposed to be, you know. Which that's yeah. Doesn't mean you have to be good. Doesn't seem like brain surgery to me, but right. I mean, he did go to Notre Dame. He should be smart. Should be. Uh, Bills sign Andre Holmes, wide receiver, formerly from Oakland, which is helpful for them because Percy Harvin now has for real, for real this time, he's retired. Uh, he came out of retirement uh, at the end of last season. I don't know what he was hoping to accomplish. Especially with them. Were they a playoff team last year? Uh, I don't think so. No. If you're in the AFC East and you're not New England, you're not a playoff team. Pretty much. Dolphins did make the playoffs, but... I don't know how. It's basically a shootout for team number two. <laughs> right. For them. Yeah. Uh, you're more apt to be the third best team in another division in the AFC and make a wild card than yeah. be the second best team in the AFC East and make so a wild card. So I get card. how they do it, but I kind of wish they would just go 
if they have eight teams that make it, it should just be the top eight teams. Like, I get there's a point yeah. to winning your, your division and stuff like that, but. I mean, they could get rid of the divisions and just be like the M- well, the I mean the NBA go is east, just go straight east west. Right. But then I don't I don't ever st- I don't understand the east and west because sometimes there's teams that are yeah it's in a weird just location. barely over the yeah. line in the west and they're in the east just because reasons. Um, and the Bills also re-signed Drill Bit Taylor. <laughs> right, Ty- uh, Tyrod Taylor. I kind of sworn he went somewhere else. Uh. Then he, he ended up re-signing for quite a bit less, didn't he? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Which is dumb. Huh? Well, maybe he just wants the paycheck and doesn't know, doesn't think he's going to really amount to anything anyway. Oh. Because isn't he going to be the backup? Didn't they? Well, he should be the starter. Oh no! You know what I was thinking is because Buffalo was one of the teams that the people rumored Romo to go to. And... Oh. Yeah. Well, that hasn't happened yet. I'm still hoping they don't. I'm hoping that Jerry just plays everyone's bluff and holds out, and then. Did you see CBS is trying to get Romo to yeah. just retire and come be an analyst? Yeah, the second program to I feel be... like he would rather be a coach than an analyst. Um, I think it would depend on schedule. I mean, analyst schedule isn't much different than being a player. you got to be there early. you got to be there late. you got to be there all day. Right. you got to travel. A little bit less traveling, I think. Yeah. Depending on if you're, you know, on an on- yeah, on I mean, the, if he's uh, at the desk sitting next to yeah. Tony Gonzalez on, on CBS. No, Tony, yeah. I got rid of Tony Gonzalez, but... Uh, Them. Yeah. I don't remember who's on what, because it's I, weird. I want him to play, I want him to start, and I want him to do well. Talked about it before, we'll talk about it again. And again, and again. And that's what we want. The uh, the Rams signed Connor, Connor Barwin, formerly of the Eagles. Uh, I wouldn't have mind signing him to Dallas. Uh, Free agency, bro. Yeah, well... We haven't done anything. Well, some other some other ones. Dontari Poe, uh, formerly of Kansas City, signs ten million dollar deal to go to Atlanta. Just helps Atlanta. Maybe they won't give up a twenty eight three lead next time. What's the <laughs> uh, what's the contract length? I'm not sure. I want to say four years. Let's say ten million. He said ten. Be one year, one or two. I was gonna say ten million for one year. It seems like a lot for. I think the guaranteed money is less. Well. It would be like a couple mil guaranteed. Huh. Because, you know, who can't live off a couple million? I can live off the interest of the interest. <laughs> um, Redskins, another division rival of the Cowboys. They've been making some moves. Not necessarily good ones. It's rebuild moves. Yeah. Um, they lose defensive tackle Chris Baker to Tampa Bay. They lose deep threat wide receiver Deshaun Jackson also to Tampa Bay. Based, I think shaping up to be a decent team. Yeah, because they added some defensive pieces too. Uh, they lose Pierre Garcon to San Francisco. Garcon sucks for him. Do you remember when Oakland was the place where you went for your career to die? end? Yeah. Now it's San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, it will yeah. be for it will be for a little bit, and then it'll go back. They'll probably play for like six weeks and then retire. <laughs> Something in the water over there. Um, to yeah. replace those pieces. They signed uh, Terrell McClain, formerly of Dallas. wasn't really a stud for us. Yeah, he was he was solid. I mean, he's a big body to have yeah. on the line. We'll see what happens with that. Um, they replace. They get Ty- uh, Tyrell Pryor. I'm not a fan. I I liked him. He's one of the guys that I even liked him in college, even though I don't like his alma mater. He works hard. I mean, the the, the knock on him is that. Oh no. He smoked the marijuanas. Yeah, and got tattoos paid for. Who cares? Yeah, the the stuff that's a knock on him is just retarded it, stuff. Anyway, it's it's the positive point that I think for him is he did what Tim Tebow wouldn't do. He went where they asked him to go. He switched positions so yeah. that he could play in the NFL. Yeah, you want me to do this? I can do it. And he's he's so athletic that he can play defense if he wanted to. Probably. I mean, if he knew the schemes and what he was, where he's he doing. He could be a solid safety. I yeah. Think. Like, t- Tim Tebow could have moved to fullback, no problem. But Instead, he moved to no back. He wanted to be a quarterback. Instead, he wants to hit foul balls and strike out in the mm-hmm. minors. And go to the wrong batter's box. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, you know, good on, good on Pryor for actually – being a team player yeah. and doing what the team needs. It's like to all do. the things that I've heard bad about him are 
literally people just having personal opinions about stuff that he did that it's not like it's morally like wrong i guess i mean morals i guess could be a hot topic but like whippy whippity do he smoked some weed which yeah it's against the rules so you should know it and not do it so right. i understand that but people are making it sound like he's out there abusing children and snorting coke off their dead mother right i mean he's not adrian peterson or josh gordon yeah and beat the living crap out of josh gordon speaking of the browns uh, Wait, what? What? Ha- they're either going to trade him or release him if he gets reinstated. His was just marijuana too, wasn't it? Or yeah. He just got in trouble for something else, didn't he? No, I'm thinking about somebody there. No, uh, no it's Alden Smith. He got oh. in trouble after a couple weeks or so ago. That dude's always in trouble. Well, it might, it might. He had somebody else that was driving the car, and I think that they, she ran into a cop car, I believe. If I remember correctly. Yeah. And supposedly he didn't do anything wrong. He was just involved in it, so that's why his name is in it. But he's he wasn't driving. He didn't he wasn't combative. It's just because of who he is in the prior issues that It wasn't Greg Hardy, was it? <laughs> no, this happened like literally a couple oh, weeks ago. Greg Hardy recently got busted. Yeah, uh, didn't he have a bunch of drugs on him? Some coke. Yeah. And he he lied and said it wasn't his. I haven't watched the video, but from what I've... What These aren't I've my heard, pants. <laughs> from what I've heard is he cannot lie to save his life. I'll have to check out the video. Uh, I don't even care about him anymore. He's already... He's one of those guys that's just his own worst enemy. Yeah. Like, literally has the talent, but just didn't have enough no people in his life to keep his ego in check. Everybody needs some no people. Dude, I'll hire anyone listening. You want a no person? Hire me. I'll tell you no every damn day. <laughs> to everything. No! Right. <laughs> Uh, so, also, the Redskins did sign Brian Quick, wide receiver from the Rams. He's uh, quick. Signing Quick and prior to replace Garcon and Jackson. You not, didn't com- not comparable. You did not upgrade Washington. Eh, money-wise, though, it might have helped them out. I didn't really look at that. To yeah, because they, they're going to have to grossly overpay Kirk Cousins <laughs> next year. Because he did sign his, his, tenure his, or his, his tender. He said yeah. he wasn't going to sign the franchise tag, but he did. We'll see yeah. what happens. I hope he's. I hope he bombs. The Redskins have always been one of those teams in our our division, Cowboys division. That uh, I never minded. Maybe it's partly because I'm part Indian, so I'm just like Redskins. <laughs> I am too, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm definitely not offended by their name, so we will call them the Redskins. We're not going to be like Peter King from Monday Morning Quarterback to calls them the team from Washington. Like, shut up, dude. They are from Washington, though. True. Um, speaking of the Redskins, we're going to stick with them for a little while on this this conversation. I don't even re- Oh, okay. I was like, I don't even remember. They've proposed two rule changes to the NFL, one of which is an adjustment to the last year's change on kickoffs right? where touchbacks would go to the 25 as opposed to the 20. Right. Redskins have proposed a rule change that – if the kicker on a kickoff can kick it through the uprights, through the, uprights the touchback is at the 20. I've always said that they, sh- they should do something. Like I'm not saying that I agree with them wanting to do that or disagreeing because I haven't really thought too much about it. But I've always said that I felt like they should do something for... <sighs> if you can kick the damn ball that damn far through the uprights on a regular basis... Why not have something in place to make it part of the part of the game? Yeah. I I don't know. I don't like the fact that I don't like the fact that they moved it they moved the kickoff up five yards. Right, because they wanted to they wanted help more with, touchbacks. Well they they wanted to it had to do with uh, injuries as well and head head injuries and right. stuff. So so more often than not the ball's going out of the end zone, there's no returns. And you just start at the 25. If right. you're going to do that, just start at the 25. Yeah, get rid of the kickoff. Don't even which kick it. I can agree and disagree with that. Sort of like in baseball, how the, I think next year they're starting it, where if you want to walk the guy, they're doing it like in high school and in college. You where say, we're going to walk, we're gonna walk him, you don't throw him. Yeah. I agree with it. Oh, I do. My mom's one that doesn't. She's, she's the old school of you should have to throw the pitches. Because there have been times. I, I remember in the 80s, I, I don't remember who the batter was. But there was a pitcher who was just like, yeah, I'm going through the motions, and he threw it too close to the plate. Guy stuck his bat out, ended up getting a hit, scored a run. Right. 
So I, I understand the thought of the, they should throw them, but the same speeds up the game. Yes. That's at least 30 seconds to a minute worth of speeding up a game right. each time you want to walk and somebody. And four less pitches that go on his shoulder. Yeah, wear and tear. Yeah. Even though just lobbing them in there isn't, but it's still, still motion-wise. baseball is a very unnatural motion. Yeah, that's why softball players don't have the shoulder in, uh, issues because it's more right. natural to underhand. So I, I actually do like that rule change. I've been saying it for no, I, I agree with the it. better part of 20 years. I agree with it. As, as a fan of watching it, I don't want to see somebody throw. Yeah. And then you have the people that will say that, well, A, what I already said, and then B, the uh, you have some of the pitchers that literally are known for wild pitching and can't pitch out. <laughs> so they end up throwing it, so it takes right. away from the surprise element of the game. But that's still going to happen if the pitcher's bad enough anyways. Agreed. All right, sorry. Anyways, I digressed us from football. No problem. Uh, the other, the other rule change that they proposed, and I find this funny because since they started doing the color rush uniforms on Thursday night football, the Redskins have not played in a Thursday night game where they've had to wear the color rush uniforms. <laughs> so they are proposing a rule change that would allow teams to opt out of wearing the, the color, color rush, rush uniforms, which is. Whatever. Some of them, like Jacksonville's, I don't want to see Jacksonville's. They look like puke. They, they, they. And when the Bills and the Jets play, it's Christmas because one's all red and one's, one's all, all green. green. And it's not good for for, for me. I I kind of I think it should all depend on when the the color rush game falls on. For example, um, in basketball when they have games on St. Patrick's Day or the weekend of. Like the Celtics, for example, they have their Shamrock jerseys. Right. Other teams have different jerseys for their China Knights or Mexico Knights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They have different uniforms specifically for that. Right. And I think it's cool. Not only for merchandise-wise is it cool, it gives notoriety to you know other uh, countries and backgrounds, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so with them doing it in football, I like it. I'd like it more if it was kind of like the NBA where there's more of a point to it opposed yeah. to we're just having a color rush because it's this right. opposed to there not being any like special significant event just to it. Just use it for Thanksgiving games. Yeah. Or a once a year. If there's Christmas, if there's, if there's Christmas games or whatever. Yeah. Do it like that. I also do wish some of the, I wish they didn't I understand the thought of color rush. It's supposed to be a rush of a color. Right. But, like the Cowboys, for example, boring. Yeah, this isn't really... It's too much white, not enough blue. The other way I would like it is if they if they didn't do... If they made them all wear the actual color instead of the white, the, the white color rush. Right. I, I don't like that. I think that. I think if they're going to go for a color rush, I don't want it to be, like, excessively gaudy. Right. And like other too bright or, or too dull, but I feel like they should find a happy medium. There's too many talented people out there and, and people that design stuff that could do it awesome. Right. I agree. Yeah, me. Um, speaking of Thursday night football, I don't think. Okay. Fans, the ratings for Thursday night are bad. For me, it's because I forget. Yeah, it. I mean, it's it's pretty much middle of the week. People got stuff going on, like tail end of the week. You're trying to get prepared for your weekend, especially if you got a family, right? Or if you're go out and do person stuff, right? Plus, by no fault of the NFL, when they schedule these games, I'm sure they look at them and they go, "Oh, this would be a good matchup. We'll put it on Thursday." But it just so happens that that season, both starting quarterbacks of the teams are injured. Or and both of them are throwing up a stinker of a right. season. And it's, they're just horrible games. Um, plus, it's, you know. And didn't, they, didn't they have, uh, wasn't it like three of the five? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to butcher the. The Cowboys were like top three of top, of the top five, like most viewed games on. No, nah, that it was, wasn't Thursday night. It was just prime time. Oh, well, that would probably. Yeah, it was prime time. My bad, anyways. Um, plus, the other issue with Thursday night, a lot of players don't enjoy it because it's on short rest. They've just played Sunday. 
And now they play Thursday. And a lot of people say, you're a professional athlete. That's what you get paid to do. When you're in a combat sport like football and you're taking hits and you're hitting, you need that time to let, A, your body recuperate, to prep properly. And anybody that can say, well, the money they make, think about it. You go into work on a Monday after having a a hectic weekend. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're not thinking right. You can't focus. Right. Imagine if when you were having your hectic weekend, it consisted of crashing into people really hard for two hours. Right. Yeah, no. I, you're going to ache on top of it, bruises. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, so it should be a more, like, you're probably going to get to this point, and I'm probably jumping the gun. Thanksgiving. There's your there's your Thursday night game. Yeah. Done. Well, it's not that I think they should just get rid of all the Thursday games and just regulate it to Thanksgiving, but only have teams that are coming off of a bye week yeah. play a- Thursday. A- yeah, it's not like you can't schedule that. Right. You know the bye weeks. Yeah. And you know another thing they could do, which you can correct me if I'm wrong. We've talked about this before. Um I'm trying to remember. Like the NBA, for example, NBA TV. Right. It's another thing that I don't like about the NFL. You have an NFL network and get no games on it. Right. The dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> we don't have rights to it. It's your product. Yeah, exactly. All right, so anyways, that's a whole nother can of worms. Um, NBA, for example. The NBA TV on Tuesday nights, I believe it is, they have fan night. So whatever games are available on TV that night, you have a fan vote. They put a thing up, I think it's like Sunday night or Monday night, you get the vote, whatever the popular vote is, that game's played. Why can't the NFL do something like that for, mm. actually that would kind of null and void the bye week because, yeah. no, because it would be. Well, then you'd have, a, you'd have a handful of games played on Thursday. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of a way for, like us for example, I end up, I end up feeling like the only time we get to see a bunch of Cowboys games is if they're having a good season like last season. They had, like, what, two games that they weren't supposed to be on primetime and they got put on primetime because they were doing so well and they were so talked about that they're like, we need the ratings, it's going to be big money. Yeah. So if if they're not having a season like that, i.e. two seasons ago, we got three games. Yeah. Right, because, I mean, they're guaranteed the one Monday night. Right. And they're guaranteed Thanksgiving. Yeah, because – Oh, and by the way, if if you're a fan of another team that doesn't play on Thanksgiving and you complain to the league, complain to your owner. Every team in the NFL is is given the option to play on Thanksgiving and the the team teams get to decide whether or not they want to or not. So if your right. team doesn't play on Thanksgiving, you're like, "How can we keep seeing the same teams?" It's cuz they That's decide why. to play. Yeah. Um no, see, the only problem, too, with that is is if they do make it so that you play Thursday games coming off a of bye week. It's still going to end up wrapping around where somebody's long, getting a short week or a long, long week. way to get to your bye week. Yeah. And that's not necessarily a good thing for any team. If you got to go 12, you know, 10, 11, 12 weeks before you get your bye week. Yeah. That's... I don't know. Or, you know what? They could just get rid of Thursday games and make every team have the same bye week right in the middle of the season. Have it like a almost like an all-star break type deal. Yeah. I just mean as far I just, yeah, I just meant as far as everyone gets the break. Yeah. Um, moving on from football, I think we covered everything we wanted to talk about with that. Did we? Yeah. I, I get my brain so sidetracked. Uh, March Madness, still in full swing. It's right madness! Now. Uh, our show bracket is busted. Per per match. My personal bracket is busted. So let's talk about why. Because number eleven, or eleven seeded Xavier. Wait a minute. What team? Wrecking House. Xavier. What did Nate say before the the bracket was finalized? Um, I was told that Xavier would be a tough out. Yeah, that that one take guy. We should pick them. One teasy. Um. But anyway, they beat... I didn't, I didn't expect them to keep going. I just know they're, they're almost always a tough team. They beat number two, two Arizona the other night. I also think they were a team that was yeah. overhyped. Um, seventh seeded, seventh seeded South Carolina. That's a mouthful. 
Sad, 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 sad. They're not doing anybody any favors no. in brackets because they're just deciding to show up. They're like once every ten years known for a basketball program. Yeah, they knocked off two seeded Duke and Thank three God. seeded Baylor. Yeah, I, I don't know. I it's it's uh, it's fun to, to when you're starting out to pick up your bracket, but then as as the tournament progresses, you're like. Damn it, I should have picked that, and I'm, I was I'm, thinking of picking that. I'm literally so competitive. That's one of the reasons why I don't do the brackets, because it's stressful for me, because I'm so competitive that even even if I only messed up one game, I'd still be pissed. Yeah. I missed uh, I missed two games in the first round of the women's bracket. They still play? Yeah. I was really annoyed that I missed two games. Why didn't you just go UConn wins, null and void the rest? I mean, I, I picked UConn to win, but I pretty much went chalk through the whole thing. I mean, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, Gonzaga continues to win. They're the one seed. They only lost one game all season. So, I, I don't remember the stat, um, but isn't it for the, the NCAA championship? I'm pretty sure like it's rare for a one seed to win. Or is it a two seed? I used to know the stat, and it also could have changed like many years ago. And I'm just my brain. Was Nova last year? Were they a one? I don't. I don't remember. That's why I'm saying. I don't remember. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying my brain's remembering it as it's. It's. I feel like you don't really remember the seeds after the tournament's over because it's just you know a team. It could also have something to do with the with the final four. There's not as many ones. I don't. Who knows? My brain's hectic right now. Um. So they beat West Virginia. Four seed of West Virginia. I, I didn't watch the game, but what I did hear was that West Virginia at the end of the game had three three chances to, to win this game. No, they just keep, they keep getting offensive rebounds. Uh, I I don't remember. I haven't been watching. I try to tell myself that I will, and then I start, and then I'm just so annoyed at how piss poor the product is. I, I changed my they channel. They had the ball, and they kept missing the shots. I think is what it was. They were only down by like two, and they just kept missing shots. Um. UNC, who I still say and have said before, is a surprising one seed. Yeah, they're 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 playing pretty tough. I think it helps that they're uh, they're a pretty big team. Yeah, which is helping them. They knocked out uh, fourth seeded Butler the other day. Um, Kentucky knocked out UCLA last night, which is good because for my personal bracket, I picked Kentucky. Right. Um. And now maybe we'll hear, we'll hear less from that family, the Ball family. I don't even want to say his yeah, name. I don't want to either. Um, I'm already pissed that he was on first take. I'm beginning to think that uh, I or we for the show should have picked Kansas. Huh? I yeah. <laughs> uh, one take had, had said you should pick Kansas. Nah, it's not. I just I said I had a, a hard time going against Kansas because I really like their backcourt. Right. I said that in our first sports talk. They're yeah. averaging 96 points per game in the tournament. Yeah, they're Kansas, man. I don't they're, think anybody else is even averaging in the 80s. No, nah, they're probably in the 70s. I'm trying to, in my head, remember scores I looked at. So they play, uh, or they played Oregon last night? Did they? I don't remember. Or they played today. I actually meant to look it up and I forgot. Um,. I have so many different uh, numbers and stuff in my head and team emblems and stuff that I'm not remembering. Okay, they play they play tonight. Tonight. Yeah, eight forty nine PM. I mean um, they're weird times. There must be a must be games going on shortly. Oh, it's so, Saturday too, isn't it? Yeah. For us, yeah. So we've got my days all confused. Gonzaga playing Xavier tonight. I expect Gonzaga to win, but like I've said, Xavier's Almost always a tough out. Um, Kansas and Oregon. That should be a tough game. And then tomorrow is UNC, Kentucky, and Florida and South Carolina. And Florida just barely snuck out their win in overtime. Oh, yeah, against Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Wisconsin hit a, hit a shot to put them up. We'll be interested to see how the rest of the bracket plays out, considering ours is just completely busted. <laughs> Um, 
that's all I've got for that college. Yeah. yeah. Do you want you want to talk about NBA a little bit? You mentioned something to me earlier about it. Well, uh, I mean, I guess we kind of can. Can it's, uh, well, we had, we'll go with Devin Booker first. All right. He he scored seventy points last night against the Celtics. In Our lose, team in a losing effort lost by ten. I do want to say that twelve of his seventy points were in garbage time, mm. where they were down by like fifteen, sixteen, and he scored twelve points in the last. I want to say seventy-five seconds of the game. Yeah, maybe a little bit more than that. Might have been ninety seconds of of the game. I mean, he was coming down and just firing. So, basically, his team teammates were pushing him. Like, You're, you can't get to 70, so he's like, I'm going to. Right. So, A, it's cool to have teammates that are like that. They're like, do it, do it, opposed to, oh, you're taking my shine. I mean, you're losing anyway. Well, he actually, because of that garbage time, got him back. They ended up losing by 10, but there was a point, I think it was like seven points with a minute 15 to go or something like that. But either way, I just wanted to say his last 12 points of the 70 were in garbage time where he was just coming down and hucking and chucking and happened to make them. I mean, it's still impressive. 70 points is... Yeah, I, and we've talked about it um, before You know, before the show. I think that that 70 is more impressive than Kobe's 81, and we have a couple Lakers fans that will be listening that will disagree. Yeah, John. Um, I'll get a message. I can hear it already. Yeah, in green. Um, or blue. <laughs> but yeah it's more impressive because a this Celtics team is better than the Toronto team that Kobe did against I have a sub point to that when you're done and this Suns team I think is worse than that Lakers team mm. I don't even remember who was on that Lakers team or what they did that Kobe. year so well yeah Kobe <laughs> But, I mean, like... Kobe was all starting five. He might as well have been. I remember him being quadruple. Four people on him and him still, him still shooting. Him, 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 When all mumbles on it. What's your sub point? My sub point is, is even though it's still uh, year-wise close, kind of close in proximity, it was, what, 10, 10, 10, 11 years ago Kobe did it? I don't even remember. It was the first time in a de- in a decade, which is ten years, right? My brain, stupid. Yeah. So it's, it's ten plus years. Either way, my other thought process is is I don't want to take away from either of them because both of them hard. My shoulder gets tired just thinking about having a huck and chuck that many shots. Yeah, two thousand six. Yeah, so about 11. A, about eleven years ago. Um. The the league rules are different now. They're set up differently. The way teams run their offenses are set up differently. It's more guard friendly. It's more offensive friendly to where you can't be guarded as hard. The defensive players aren't allowed to do. Th- There's so much min- more minimal contact now that it's kind of easier to get shots up. So even though it's impressive to me, it would have been more impressive if it was done in, you know, the early 2000s at the latest and then in the 80s and the 90s, then it would have been ridiculously impressive. Yeah. Like, even Wilt. People can say whatever they want about Wilt's 100. I'm not impressed by it. it. Like, it's a feat, and it's like, oh, cool, he scored 100 points. Right. Seven-foot behemoth of a man playing against six-foot-six white guys that were slow as can be. Yeah. And he scored 100 points. I, I used to know the, the final score of that game. I think it was like 146 or 126 or something like that. So it was literally they just – his team knew that he was bigger, stronger, faster, and could get any shot up over the entire team. So they just kept feeding him the ball over and over and over. It was 169 to 167. 169. All right, so he, he scored 100 of the team's 169 points. Yeah. But either way, I mean, 100 point, it, it, it's kind of impressive, but just if he did that in the the 80s or the 90s, I want to say more in the 90s, like if he did it against Bill Russell, right? if he did it against Shaq, then then I'd be like, damn. Yeah. But. Um, a huge turnout for that game, by the way. Was there like 120 people? 4,124. Yeah. They even the footage from that Pack. back in the day was actually they might not have that. Yeah. Um, but anyways, like that nah, was cool. Um, they weren't 
I read a thing saying that they weren't going to let the loss, you know, take their high away, which good for, good for you because that is a feat. Me, my, my uh, well, I want to say my friends, but I don't really have any that now that know me from back then. <laughs> my mom can attest to the fact that I could have had the best game and we could have won and my brain's going to focus on the things I did wrong. Yeah. And if we lost, I could have scored, you know, 40, 50 points and I'm going to be pissed because we lost. Right. No, um, yeah, on that one. I mean, good good for them being like, yeah, he did something that that's, you know, at the professional level and extremely difficult to do. And he's young, too. Yeah, he's... So he's, he's like 20? Yeah, I think. I mean, this is his third year, I think. Uh, it doesn't help. I've stopped following on a regular basis on every team. I used to be able to name all 12 players on every team in the NBA, and now I, like, probably know three. That's quite the drastic change. Yeah. I used to be similar to that with the NFL. Pretty much every player. Well, that's a little bit better than I can tell you where they went to college. Well, yeah. I was, NBA, there's 12 players, and I could tell you where they went to college and every guy on every roster yes. and their number. He's 20. He'll be 21 this year. Yeah. He can't even really celebrate. No. Well, again, <laughs> shh. Well, yeah. Don't tell his mom. Um, but, no, it was definitely impressive. I like the Phoenix team. Um, I think they're a tough team. It's just they they haven't seemed to uh, bring it together yet. And then they lose a couple pieces here and there. And, like, they brought in Tyson Chandler in hopes that that was going to bring in other people, and it didn't. Right. So they've had to rely on free agency, I think, and the draft. But what was the other thing? Joakim Noah. Oh, yeah, Joakim Noah is getting a 20-game suspension for failing a drug test for a banned substance. I guess it was an over-the-counter supplement. I don't know how long he's been taking it, if it's a new thing or if it's one he's been taking and he just hasn't been tested, which I kind of – I mean, I know they do random tests, but I find it funny that he wouldn't be tested at least once a year. Right. You'd think everyone would be. Um, yeah. But we we were talking before recording about it, and we're both in agreement and disagreement with the situation. I agree that all right. So I'll, I'll word it this way: from from what I read. Um, sorry, I was looking at something. Um, we uh, we were talking about it, and I was reading an article from ESPN. So if I'm wrong, it's their fault. <laughs> um, and it said that. Um, the substance or the supplement that he got in trouble for is not a supplement that is going to be a banned supplement in the new collective bargain agreement that starts after this season. I used to know the time. I think it. I think it's around June. I don't know if it's right after the season. Either way, I'm pretty sure it's in the summer. I could be wrong. Brain concussions, stupid. I am. Either way, so my thought process was is if they already know that it's a, a, a supplement that's no longer going to be an issue, that it should have been like a reverse grandfathering effect. Um, but Chubbs and I were talking and saying that, like, and I agree with him and, and whatnot, is that you're already under a collective bargaining agreement and it's a rule. You have to abide by it. And if right. you don't, you get in trouble, which makes sense. But in the same, it's not like it's coke. It's not like he's going out in the court, you know, buzzed out of his mind. Yeah. It's a health supplement. And it's not like it's roids that we know of yet. I don't think it's Adderall or any of that crap. I, I just think that he should at least serve the suspension because it's ten, the last ten games this of this the season, season the first ten of right. next season. He should serve the last ten, and that should be it because – Next year, he's serving a suspension for something that's not... That's no longer in the current collective bargaining agreement right. for the current season that you're in. Because I, I think if you just say, well, it's not going to be a problem next year, so just forget about it. I just think that's a real slippery slope to start. Yeah, I, I, I do and I don't. Like you were saying earlier, because there's other people that are like, well, how come he gets off? And it's like, well, because it's one that's not going to be on, and we know for a fact it's not going to be on the ban list. The one that you're talking about is, and it always is going to be. Don't be an idiot. Right. Um. But, yeah, it's 
I mean, it's it's Joakim Noah. He's on the very, very, very tail end of his career. He's not even playing right now. He's injured. Mm. Should just retire after the season. Stick it to the NBA. Ha <laughs> 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 They actually probably end up taking it out of his money. They like he'd have to pay for it either way. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Well. I think that's all we've got for you today. Yeah, that's all I got. I'm hungry. Uh, while you're here, go ahead and like, subscribe, share. You can check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash na.podcast919. Instagram and Twitter, na.podcast919. Hit us up if you want to. Drop a comment, whatever. Yeah, we're also going gonna to try our, our best to uh, be more uh, social on the social medias. Yes. Especially, well, I would say the Twitters, but I don't go on there too, too much because it's just, it's a chaotic format for me. I don't like it. There's too many, oh, click this link, but there's also words here, and then click, it's just too much. Too much for my oldness. <laughs> but uh, I'll we, handle the Twitter. We, we, we might post some more. You know, stuff on Instagram to try to be more social or have more stuff up there for people to look at. And since we are the non applicable podcast, it may not be applicable to anything. And it might just be something that we think's retardedly funny. Agreed. Because that is how we roll. Yeah, so thanks for tuning in and uh, catch our next episode sometime in the future. And then pass it. Catch and pass it. Deuces. That's going to go weird. Double deuces.